So that's why today I'm pleased to announce that under the Recovery Act, we are making the largest ever investment in a smarter, stronger, and more secure electric grid. This investment will come in the form of 100 grants totaling $3.4 billion, grants that will go to private companies, utilities, cities, and other partners who have applied with plans to install smart grid technologies in their area. And throughout th this week, the members of my cabinet are going to be fanning across the country talking about some of the winning projects. Some of the projects involve modernizing old, inefficient transmission lines that just waste too much energy. And to speed that process along, nine federal agencies have signed an agreement that will help break down the bureaucratic barriers that currently make it slow and costly to build new transmission lines on federal lands. But most of the projects that are receiving grants involve the installation of what are known as smart meters, devices that will have a direct benefit for consumers who want to save money on their electric bills. For example, even as Florida Power and Light is bringing this solar plant online today, it also is deploying hundreds of thousands of these smart meters in people's homes throughout Florida, much like the recovery through retrofit plan we launched last week to boost the weatherization and retrofit industry, these devices will help you greatly improve the energy efficiency in your own home. Now let me explain what's going on with these smart meters. Smart meters will allow you to actually monitor how much energy your family is using by the month, by the week, by the day, or even by the hour. So coupled with other technologies, this is going to help you manage your electricity use and your budget at the same time, allowing you to conserve electricity during times when prices are highest, like hot summer days. Through these investments in a variety of smart grid technologies, utilities like Florida Power and Light will also be able to monitor the performance of its electricity grid in real time, which means they'll be able to identify and correct service interruptions more quickly and effectively. And all this information will help increase renewable energy generation, provide support for plug-in electric vehicles and reduce the carbon pollution that causes climate change. Here in this region of Florida, this project will reduce demand for electricity by up to 20 percent during the hottest summer days that stress the grid and power plants. It will provide smart meters to 2.6 million more customers, and most importantly, it will create thousands of jobs. Good jobs, by the way, that can't be outsourced, jobs that will last and jobs that pay a decent wage. On their own, the opening of this new solar plant or the installation of new smart meters or the investment in grid modernization will not be enough to meet the challenges posed by our dependence on fossil fuels. But together, we can begin to see what a clean energy future will look like. We can imagine the day when you'll be able to charge the battery on your plug-in hybrid car at night because your smart meter reminded you that nighttime electricity is cheapest. In the daytime, when the sun is at its strongest. Solar panels like these and electricity stored in car batteries will be able to power the grid with affordable emission-free energy. The stronger, more efficient grid would be able to uh, transport power generated at dams and wind turbines from the smallest towns to the biggest cities. And above all, we can see all this work that would be created for millions of Americans who need it and who want it here in Florida and all across the country. So we're on the cusp of this new energy future. In fact, a lot of it's already taken place. E even as I'm here today, Vice President Biden's in Delaware announcing the reopening of a once shuttered GM factory that will soon put people back to work building plug-in electric hybrid vehicles. On Friday, I was in Boston. That's good news. On Friday, I was in Boston, where workers will soon be great, uh, breaking ground on a new wind technology testing center that will allow researchers in the United States to test the world's newest and largest wind turbine blades for the very first time. And there are recovery projects like this in cities and counties all across the country. So at this moment, there's something big happening in America when it comes to creating a clean energy economy. But getting there will take a few more days like this one and more projects like this one. And I've often said that the creation of such an economy is going to require nothing less than the sustained effort of an entire nation, an all-hands-on-deck approach similar to the mobilization that preceded World War II or the Apollo Project. And I also believe that such a comprehensive 
piece of legislation that is taking place right now in Congress is going to be critical. That's going to finally make clean energy the profitable kind of energy in America. Legislation that will make the best use of resources we have in abundance through clean coal technology, safe nuclear power, sustainably grown biofuels, and energy we harness from the wind, waves, and sun. The House has already acted and passed such legislation, and the Senate's on the way. In fact, just today, the Environment and Public Works Committee, under the leadership of Senator Barbara Boxer, is holding the Senate's first hearings on this bill. The creation of a clean energy economy has to be made as swiftly and carefully as possible to ensure that what it takes to grow this economy in the short, medium, and long term is no longer delayed. And I'm pleased to report that a consensus is growing to achieve exactly that. Consensus between Democrats and Republicans, environmentalists and evangelicals, labor leaders, and especially so many business leaders like Lou that are ready to jump on board because they understand that the growth of clean energy can lead to the growth of our economy. Now, I have to be honest with you, though. The closer we get to this new energy future, the harder the opposition is going to fight, uh, the more we're going to hear from special interests and lobbyists in Washington whose uh, interests are contrary to the interests of the American people. Uh, there are those who are also going to suggest that moving towards a clean energy future is going to somehow harm the economy or lead to fewer jobs, and they're going to argue that we should do nothing, stand pat, do less, or delay action yet again. I just want to point out we've heard such arguments before. We've engaged in this same type of debate a lot of times through our history. People don't like change, and they get nervous about it. Lou and I were just talking about it. He said especially utility executives get nervous about change. <laughs> it's a debate between looking backwards and looking forward, between those who are ready to seize the future and those who are afraid of the future. And we know which side the United States of America has always come down on. We know that we've always been a people who were unafraid to reach for that more promising future. We know that the promise of places like DeSoto and projects like the creation of a modern electricity grid mean a continuation of that long march of progress in this country. And we refuse to believe that our politics are too broken to make the energy future we dream of a reality. I know what the American people are capable of when they're called upon to meet big challenges. I know it because I've seen it here in Arcadia and I've seen it all across America. This is the nation, after all, that harnessed electricity and the energy contained in an atom that developed the steamboat and the modern solar cell that connected a continent with a massive system of highways and railroads. And I believe we can blaze such trails again. And I commend all of you for being so critical in these early first steps. Congratulations to you on your extraordinary achievement. And when it comes to the development of clean, renewable energy, I hope there are going to be a lot of days like this one to come. I know I'm going to be working as hard as I can to make it possible. And while I'm here, I just want to introduce Carol Browner, who works with me in our White House. And she is helping to lead the charge in Washington. She just happens to be from Florida. And so she knows a little bit about the Sunshine State. Uh, we are so excited by what you've done. Uh, and we are absolutely confident we're just going to keep on building on the great progress that you've already made. Thank you, Arcadia.